stem cell 101 at the end of this presentation i want you to understand what is a stem cells what they are doing in your body what is their role in your life what they mean for you today what you can do about it and with all the options that you have right now with regard to stem cell treatments or how to tap into the regenerative power of stem cells you can see a path forward to uh, in terms of what it what it means for you right now in your life so first what are stem cells the best way to understand what is a stem cell is to first define what is not a stem cell all the cells of your body are called somatic cells. They are specialized, they will do one specific thing, they will never transform, and to a large extent will never multiply. Take a cell of your pancreas that makes insulin, a cell of your heart that contracts, or a cell of your muscle that contracts, a cell of your retina will react to light. They will do one thing, they will never transform into another type of cell. At the other end of the spectrum, you have stem cells. Stem cells are essentially nothing. They don't have a specific function as a stem cell. Their function as a stem cell is to actually transform and become a somatic cell. Historically, traditionally, stem cells are known to be precursors to blood cells. They will become red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. What is the big discovery at the beginning of the year 2000 is that stem cells from the bone marrow were discovered you have the ability of transforming into virtually every single cell types of your body and actually their role in your body is that they are your repair system this by itself is a huge discovery the last time that we discovered a system in the body it's in the early 1900s with the immune system the endocrine system and then a century later we discovered that we have a repair system this by itself is i think is just amazing so here's what your repair system is Anytime you have an injury, this was seen with heart attacks, with stroke, with burn to the skin, cut to the skin, bone fracture, within a few hours of the injury, the affected area will release compounds that will go to the bone marrow and trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. Within three to five days after the injury, you will have in your bloodstream an increase of anywhere between three to ten fold in the number of circulating stem cells. When they are released, these stem cells don't know where to go. They don't know where the problem is in the body. So how it works is that the area that is affected by the injury will release locally in the fine capillaries of that tissue specific compounds, specifically SDF1, stromal derived factor 1, compounds that will locally when they get into the fine capillaries, they will touch the stem cells that are circulating into these capillaries and will trigger the migration of stem cells out of the capillaries into that tissue. And when stem cells get into contact with cellular debris of that tissue, it will trigger their proliferation, they will multiply, and their transformation into cells of that tissue. Of all this process, the part that is the most important is how many stem cells you have in your blood circulation. They will migrate into tissues they will become cells of other tissues but what can really enhance this whole process of tissue repair is how many stem cells you have in your blood circulation in your bone marrow stem cells are immortal they self renew they make copies of themselves during the entire life of an individual so you will have them all your life now how were they discovered because I'm saying we've just discovered now that we have this repair system. How is it with the level of sophistication that we have in science? How can we believe that something that has never been seen before now, it becomes so obvious and all of it is true. And it's like many times in science, we discovered bacteria after the development of the microscope that allowed to see bacteria. We discover supernovas after the development of the telescope. We discovered a specific tool called green fluorescent protein. It was discovered in the 1960s, was developed over decades, and in 2008, it received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It's a protein that is spontaneously fluorescent, extracted initially from a jellyfish. Since it is a protein, we can derive the DNA that encodes for this protein. When you have the DNA, you can inject it into the nucleus of a stem cell, so that stem cells will make green fluorescent protein. You shed a light on it, it glows, you can see it very easily. Now, if that stem cell moves into, let's say, the liver and becomes a population of liver cell, you cannot tell with a microscope that these liver cells were stem cells the day before. But if you shed a light on them, they start to glow because they're filled with this green fluorescent protein. And now you can tell that all these liver cells were stem cells the day before. 
And that is how the whole phenomenon basically was revealed. It has been there since the day we were born, actually since the, as long as we've been humans, stem cells are the repair system. Anytime you have an injury, remember you're a kid, you break a bone, the doctor will put your bone fracture, will put you in a cast and will say, come back in six weeks. Nobody tells you what is happening during those six weeks. Nobody tells you anything to do to support the process of tissue repair. In science, we don't have a language around something for which we have no knowledge. So for all these years, we know that we're healing, but we don't have a language around it because we don't know what is this process, or we did not know what was this process. Now we know what it is. It's basically based on stem cells. And again, there's a direct link between how many stem cells you have in circulation and your ability to repair. You have seen that when people have injuries, the same injury in different people, and people don't repair with the same efficiency or at the same speed. It all depends on how many stem cells naturally they have in their blood. So if there's such a link between the number of stem cells in circulation and the ability to repair, then the question that came into the minds of many scientists is, if we have a means of putting more stem cells in circulation, can we enhance the ability of tissue repair? And that has been shown across the board in hundreds of studies, yes. If you can put more stem cells in circulation, you can enhance the ability of any type of damage in the body to better repair. Now, stem cells got associated because of all of this as being the repair system of the body, and they are. But to me, there's something even more important and fascinating in the natural role of stem cells in the body. And it's the fact that in the absence of any kind of injury, stem cells still continue to go into every single tissue for tissue maintenance. What stem cell research has revealed, something that somewhere we knew intuitively before, but without real hard data. You may have heard these sentences, you have a new body every year, every seven years, every 12 years. Conceptually, it is true, but we did not have data. Now we do have data, and what we can say is that while it is true, every single organ and tissue of the body does this renewal with a different kind of time frame. You get a new liver every two, three years, a new pancreas every four, six years, a new muscle every nine years, new skin every month, new lining of the intestine every five days. You get half of a new heart every 25 years. The brain also renews. We don't have a real time frame for the brain, but it also renews. Now these time frame are not hard numbers set in concrete. They are basically just estimation coming from some of the studies that are emerging in the field of stem cell research. One thing that is clear is that your entire body is constantly in this process of turnover. You are losing cells every day. So to stay healthy, you need to replace the cells that are being lost, and that is the role of stem cells. So in the background, in the absence of any injury, you need stem cells to simply maintain your health. The problem is that you are born with red marrow, and that red marrow very quickly transforms into yellow marrow. That does not make stem cells. By age 30, you have lost about 95% of your red marrow, which corresponds to a sharp decline in the number of circulating stem cells. You don't have enough stem cells to offset cellular loss. And that's when you discover in your 30s that you're no longer Superman, Wonder Woman, and you don't heal as fast. And from that point on, start in your body the accumulation of daily unrepaired damages that are very small every day. You will not experience them, but they accumulate over a number of years, and they are the cause of pretty much every single age-related health problems. If you count the number of stem cells in people who have developed a heart disease, atherosclerosis, or arterial disease, liver failure, lupus, arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, Parkinson, Alzheimer's, kidney failure, liver failure, COPD, long problem. And the list keeps growing. Anytime a new study is done, we find pretty much the same outcome. Erectile dysfunction as well is on that list. People who have developed these problems have on average half the number of stem cells that you find in healthy people of the same age. There is a direct link between how many stem cells you have in your body and the ability of your body to age with health. Now, this is really how your body works with stem cells. Now, when we talk about 
any type of treatment with stem cells, we often talk about different types of stem cells. Bone marrow stem cells. It is something that has been used for quite some time. It is still used today. So it is a painful procedure made less painful with some new technology. So it's still out there. We can go and extract or aspirate stem cells from the bone marrow. It is probably one of the best source of stem cells. So we aspirate them from the bone marrow, clean them up, and then we can re-inject them either in the systemic blood circulation in your vein or at the entrance of a tissue so that you maximize the number of stem cells that will go into a specific tissue that you want to repair. You can do the same thing with stem cells that are extracted from adipose tissue, fat tissue. Your fat tissue contains a lot of stem cells and what is unique about these stem cells is that they multiply very slowly. So that means that the stem cells that you have are actually in nature fairly young and very effective and that is why many treatments today are based on adipose stem cells. So you basically make an aspiration of fat, you extract stem cells, clean them up, and in the same way you inject them in the blood circulation or at the entrance of a tissue. You also have blood stem cells, you can extract them from the blood. It is not as clean an extraction, but the blood does contain a unique type of stem cells called V-cell, very small embryonic-like stem cells. I won't go into the detail, but these stem cells are absolutely fascinating. They are the size of a platelet, and when you talk about platelet-rich fraction or platelet-rich plasma that has been used for decades for joints and different kinds of treatments and they say no these don't contain stem cells they do they contain a very small stem cell and it is the stem cell so far in the body that has been known to be the most potent this kind of stem cells is in your body in an active form or a quiescent or dormant form so they need to be activated various technologies using lasers have been shown to be able to activate these stem cells so they will take your blood out of your body or circulate it out of your body expose it to these lasers put them back into your body and we've basically have activated your own V cells. So these are, this is probably today the main technology using blood stem cells. And I keep for the end umbilical cord stem cells because they're very interesting. But I will say that some people raise questions right or wrong. I'm just exposing it here, that you're going to put into your body a different type of DNA. What could be the consequence of this? We don't know. All of this is too early. There's one positive thing about umbilical cord stem cells. They are young. There's a relationship between the age of your stem cells and their ability to repair in the body. We know very well undoubtedly that older stem cells do not repair as well as young stem cells. This being said, there is a sort of a, a rumor circulating out there saying that after 40 years of age, your stem cells fall down the cliff and they're worthless. It is absolutely untrue. We have seen in many cases, hundreds of cases, people getting huge benefits for their health simply by stimulating the release of their own stem cells. We have a study right now, for example, using plant extract that stimulate the release of your own stem cells, study on congestive heart failure with patients that are 65 years old and above. And we are getting amazing results. So that is not true. At any time in your life, no matter what age you have, if you can put more of your own stem cells in your blood circulation, your body will use it for tissue repair. This being said, at some point in my life, in my 60s, 70s, it might be interesting to reseed my bone marrow with younger stem cells so that I can basically have a greater power to repair or maintain my health as I advance in age. So there's a place for these umbilical cord stem cells. And the last approach with stem cells, which is the one that I've developed and have worked with in the past 20 some years, is referred to as endogenous stem cell mobilizations. Since we know that your stem cells are your natural repair system, then the question is, let's put more stem cells in circulation, not through an injection, but simply by stimulating this natural process in your body, which is to release your own stem cells. I have discovered plant extracts that do just that. They stimulate the release of your own stem cells. So you take these plant extracts, and we can count in the bloodstream within two, three hours after consumption using flow cytometry. We can quantify and document that you have an increase increase of up to 10 million stem cells in circulation that you have released from your own bone marrow. So that is another approach that can be used to tap into the power of stem cells. Now, what kind of conditions can stem cells be applied to? Generally speaking, stem cells repair. They can become cells of every single tissue. If they did not, you would not be alive today. 
Think about it. If you get a new pancreas every four to six years, a new liver two, three years, half of a new heart every 25 years. So at 25 years old, if your stem cells were not there to migrate in various tissues and become cells of various tissues, you would be left with half of your heart. So your stem cells are there. They do their work. When you release them, you don't have to worry if they're going to help your body repair. They do. They will, and they have done so since the day you are born. So they become cells of every single tissue. Now, what are the main conditions for which we have seen benefits with stem cells? So let's talk about the heart. There's good documentation with both stem cell injection or releasing your own stem cells that you can support the repair of the heart after a heart attack. In the heart, it's the same thing in the brain. The general consensus is that yes, stem cells can go into the heart and become heart cells, but to a large extent, the repair comes from heart, cardiac, or tissue resident stem cells that are there in the heart. And when the stem cells migrate into the heart, it secretes compound growth factor that will stimulate the inherent ability of the heart to repair. But the bottom line is at the end, you do get repair. So we can get repair after a heart attack or the consequence of a heart attack, which is congestive heart failure. So just a weak heart. So you can also help the heart repair. We have a study again using endogenous stem cell mobilization, the release of your own stem cells with plant extract. And so far in all the patients that we have in the study, we have seen significant improvement, average of about 19% in ejection fraction. The study is ongoing. It will be published as soon as it is over. There's also a relationship between the number of stem cells in circulation and atherosclerosis, and more stem cells in circulation has been known to support arterial health or the health of the entire cardiovascular system. It is believed to be one of the mechanisms of action why there is such a link between the number of stem cells in circulation and erectile function. Another application is the brain. It's very interesting to see that things that so far in medicine is traditionally understood or thought to be very difficult to repair, like the heart and the brain, tend to respond very well for stem cells. So showing that stem cells are really the repair system of the body and that decline in the number of stem cells that we have past 30 years old is really significant for our ability to repair. Because if you do put more stem cells in circulation, the brain can repair. This has been documented with Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, uh, traumatic brain injuries, even stroke, spinal cord injury. Stem cells can go into these tissues and help recover. I won't go into more detail. It's a complex field, but fascinating field as far as stem cells are concerned. We can help the liver repair. We can help the pancreas repair with diabetes or overall blood glucose metabolism. We can help the lung repair, joints, the skin, every single tissue of the body can repair. When we talk about the skin, it's very interesting because if you have more stem cells in circulation, many studies have shown that the skin can repair much better because if you don't have enough stem cells in circulation, a wound is a lethal condition as far as your biology is concerned. You're in the wild, you get a cut, it's an exposure to infection, you can get sepsis, you can die. So of course today few people die of a simple wound, but biologically speaking, it's something that your body needs to seal as quickly as possible. If you don't have enough stem cells in circulation, the local fibroblast will kick in and will basically seal the wound, making a fibroid tissue. It's a keloid scar. It's a scar and you want to get rid of. But if you have enough stem cells in circulation, they will migrate into the injury and will basically become a keratinocyte, air follicles, sepaceous gland, sweat glands, everything that you have in a normal skin. And you will end up with a very, very simple or delicate scar, very fine scar. So there's a link between stem cells cells and the ability of your skin to repair. Since your skin is the largest organ of the body and it renews every month or so, it is a huge consumer of the stem cells that you release from the bone marrow. So when you start releasing your own stem cells or you get an injection of stem cells, one of the very common story is that regardless the reason why people do this, they come back and they say, people are asking me what I have done because my skin looked more radiant. So in any case, these are all the benefits that you can obtain for stem cell, from stem cell treatment or tap tapping into the power of your own stem cells and the type of conditions for which people do this. So I hope that this was useful and it gives you a little bit more clarity as to what are your stem cells, what they're doing in your body, what they can do in your life right now and how to tap into the power of your own stem cells.